Hi. In this video, we will talk about how to plot dot plots using dot. So first of all, if you don't have the dot2 package installed, please go and install that using the install dot packages bracket ggplot2. Once you install it, you have to load it by calling this statement library. Let's run it. So this is our first plot. We'll be using the inbuilt data set bars. If I run this statement, see first of all that car has only two columns, speed and the dis uh, distance. So using that, we have plotted a, a jump point plot and this is the output of that. So we've used jump point to plot dots. So the color is red and the shape is two, which is like a triangle shape. And a few of the other parameters like label, the title, the subtitle, and the caption, etc. As you can see the title, subtitle, caption of this. So this is a basic dot plot. And let's go further. And in this, we would like to have you notice that I put alpha equals half or 0 0.5 and let's see what this does for us. It's actually giving us a transparency. You can see that instead of a jet black color, it has given us kind of a grayish color because we have changed the alpha or the transparency to 0 0.5. You can play it up and down from 1 to see how the output actually changes. In the next one, I am actually trying to say that the x-axis is going to plot the speed. Remember in the car's data set, we only have two columns, speed and the distance. So x is the speed, y is the distance. And I want to color each dot based on their speed. So if I run this up, you see that we end up having a multi-shaded dot. So starting from five being the West and the light color or the light blue being the highest 25. We can influence the scale of the, the colors which are being plotted. So in this case, it's only a blue scale going from a dark blue to light blue. In this one, I would like to have my low speeds being shown as green color and the high speed is being shown as red color. Let's see how it comes up. So we can see that it started from the green and then slowly turned into And this is the command which does for us scale, color, gradient. Gradient starts from low, side it goes to red. And I also changed the, my legend position to be on the top instead of on the right. Or on the bottom I wanted to do. If you don't want to see it, you can put it as none and then it won't do anything. At all. So if I show you that, it's gone now. And now I want to bring it back or maybe I want to put it right hand side. I can side this way. And the next one I would like to a bit more information on the legends. So I wanted to have the, the legend which was plotted at the top. And I wanted to have the legend background or this background within that legend area as I want to fill it by a gray color. Control gray colored. And then I want to color the rectangle or the, the boundary outside boundary with the red color that works well legend dot key is this little area within that within the each item of the legend and i want to fill it up with light blue color which i did so this light blue color is coming up and the legend dot key size is a, the size of this little 
rectangle. So if I go and change it to one, you can see that our output would look slightly different. It has gone one centimeter that way and half centimeter. And I can do one by one. That gives us a bigger rectangle. So you can control and influence different portions of the legend as well. You can also, we talked about the shape in the beginning of the, the chart. So this is the shape. I'm saying my jump point with the point shape should be shape equals two. This is a, a, a triangle like shape. And in this, I'm actually putting the shape into variable. So I'm saying shape equals one, and then I'm saying shape equals shape. So let's let's see what it does for us, and then we'll see why I've actually done it this way. So this is the shape one. Now I want to create a simple function, and in the function, I'm going to create a ggplot. So all that code which was there, I have placed inside function. Function is called create all shapes. And in the function, I'm passing the, the parameter, which is the shape. So I, I can pass like shape one, two, three, etc. And then that shape will get replaced there. If I put shape one in the, my function, this jump point is going to get shape equals one. And then the subtitle also is going to show using shape equals one. So this is what you saw in, in this. So if I run this up again, you would see that it says using shape equals one because I passed shape equals one there, and then um, actually plotted shape one, which is so. Now we have a function called create shapes. So the reason I've created this function is so that we can see what different types of shapes are available. So I would run my function which I created. You can see that the uh, this is listed in the function. That means the function is available to us, and all we need to pass is the shape value. So I'm going to run my function 26 times, starting from five. If I run the whole script, you will see that all the charts have been created. So let's go through that one by one. I click on the first one. You can see it's the shape zero. Click on this one. This is shape one, shape two, shape three, five, ten, eleven, fifteen. So these are different kind of shapes which are available. We can also change the color and the size as well. So apart from the, the shape two, I'm saying color should be red and the size should be three. So let's see what it does for color mistake. Saying speed versus distance, changing the shape, color, and size of the dots. And this is the shape um, triangle, and then the color is red and the size equals three. Now, what if we wanted to plot or write the, the values of each distance in that as well? So, yes, we can do that. If I run this, you can see that the text has been placed. So the text is actually the distance for each. So it's y axis points for. And this is the command which does for us. So we are saying that the jump text AES labels equals distance. So actually putting a label on each of those points and it's using the same X and Y value. So it goes to that X and Y value and puts the label. You notice that the dots are actually covered by the number itself. So the number is right superimposed on the, on the dots itself. You can influence the location of that using the V justification or the 
justification we just or just so in this case i'll give you an example of that i'm using v just equals minus 0 0.5 so you can see that the, the dots or, or the or the text has moved slightly upwards instead of this it has moved a bit further up you can actually control it by increasing it a bit more for example 0 0.8 and you would see that it would have moved a bit further or rather out of the and you can also influence it uh, by reducing it say minus point one you can see that it has come down so this way you can actually try um, adjusting the position you can also use edge justification so that you can move it left and right as well and the text seems to be too big let's reduce the size of this text as well so that might also make our graph a bit better yes we have reduced our the text of the of the jump text and this is what it does for us so pass the size equals three or i can pass size equals two you can see the text would go smaller i think i'll leave it at three so okay that looks good um and we can go a bit further and there's also another package called gg repel the gg repel is very useful when you have a lot of dots which are actually overlapping and then the numbers are not very clear um, clearly listed on the on, on the text so let's see what it does for us now you can see that the text placement is a bit more clearer compared to this you can see that if there are two dots then it shows that this is 93 and then there's a small line which tells this similarly all the numbers seem to be much 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 clearer compared to what we had up there and this is a package which helps us to do that and instead of using the, the geom text which we use here i'm using geom text repel which is coming from this particular package so this helps us to scatter the num numbers in such a way that they a bit more clearer compared to and with that we come to the end of this video i hope you found this information useful and thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one